Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we have Orphelias versus the Sponge. No, on intersection with no water. People were complaining about water last game. There's no water this game. I hope that satisfies. Let's get started. So, the Sponge over on the north side of the map going for light vehicles, while Orphelias on the southeast side of the map going for air. Slightly unusual, but not too unusual. The sponge's start is very typical on this map. Air is definitely a thing I see a lot in 2v2s on intersection, but 1v1s, it can be pulled off. It's really risky, though. Usually what'll happen is, as we can see, ravens, a couple ravens come up at the start, and then basically relies on their opponent not building up a couple defenders, like over here-ish, so that the ravens get stopped. Now, the sponge probably will realize what's happening quickly enough, but this raven can attack right now, and it probably will. Although if it doesn't, the darts are coming in, and they're very close. As one dart over to the north, one dart over to the south. They are going to spot these before they attack. And that will give the sponge enough time to build defenses. In fact, I'm a bit surprised the sponge is not building any defenders right now. They are building a lotus. That won't do it. Because right now, Orphelius could just run over here and start bombing out metal extractors. And other stuff like that. I mean, at this point, the sponge, I think, is aware of what's going on. Yep, the sponge is definitely now aware of what's going on. And is not yet acting on it. What the heck? Why is the sponge not building defenders? That is very surprising. Because yeah, the typical counter to an air rush like this, you build a couple defenders and then... Actually, sorry, I'm thinking of a gnat rush. A gnat rush, you want to build a bunch of defenders and then that'll just stop them from stunning out your commander and then having to get killed by something else. It's raven rushes, on the other hand, you want to just expand as quickly as possible. Send workers everywhere. Build a few defenders, yes, but send workers... Like, four defenders is a good number. But then send workers everywhere. And it looks like trying to go for a calm kill, and that's not going to work! Commander just barely survives that, and there's going to be enough defenders by the next raven that it won't... Well, next next wave? There's going to be enough defenders to stop that. But yeah, when it comes to dealing with this, the best thing to do is to do a mass expansion. Don't stay in your base. Expand everywhere. And Skazi, I think it's a little bit more than 10% water. Just a little bit. I think it's like 15 or so. I mean, I'm not totally sure. I'm not a doctor. So, Orphelius getting up a crane, going for mass expansion themselves, that's the thing you gotta deal with. That's part of the reason why you want to do mass expansion, because they're gonna do mass expansion, and at this point, the sponge has too many defenders. Four is enough, six is too many. But yeah, the thing with mass expansion is you're typically gonna expand faster than your opponent can really bomb you out. And if they're going for an expansion themselves, you remain... You remain the in the lead. I mean, if they go for bombers, you get expansions, you get economic lead. If you can take out their bombers, you're good. If they go for cranes, then you're even with them. You're not going to fall behind. At this point, Orphelius is going to probably get ahead because they have the crane, or at least they were... There it is. They have a crane. They can easily expand. And the sponge, on the other hand, staying inside their base, getting all... They're getting kind of timid. They're not expanding. They're not... They have only three metal extractors. This fourth one over here hasn't even been completed yet. At this point, Orphelius' strategy is working out beautifully for them. They're able to do a lot of damage just because of the fact that they had those early ravens. They haven't actually done anything with them since. And at this point, Orphelius appears to be expecting the sponge to do a mass expansion strategy, and nothing is going to come of it. Because there's no expansion. The sponge has not expanded at all to deal with this. Well, Orphelius is doing that. And the sponge is just sitting there complaining about it. I wish I could turn off chat when these replays... But yeah, there is a way to deal with air start, and that is expand. Mass expansion deals with raven start pretty well. Mass expansion into anti-air, build a few defend, like four defenders, that's usually good. And then just expand everywhere. You're gonna lose metal extractors, that's fine. That happens. Because right now Orphelius hasn't built anything other than metal extractors. They're just mass expanding themselves. Actually, they probably need to deal with this crane. They really need to deal with this crane. And going for a shield switch. Going for a ground switch after the air factory. But yeah, that air factory start... That really scared the sponge. I mean, the sponge has not expanded at all since then. They are just shaking in their boots, while Orphelius has taken full advantage of this. Well, nearly full advantage. They're definitely building up where they can. I mean, they are just... They are expanding. They are getting their economy advantage. These ravens, these two ravens, which really aren't that scary, they're taking out everything. They're taking... Orphelius basically has total map control just because these two ravens are causing the sponge to feel really timid and doesn't want to move out. And that's... 
that's going to give Orphelius a massive advantage, as it should be very obvious. So Orphelius is starting to get some attacks coming in here, but even then, they have their shield out factory being built up. They have no static defenses, mind you, and they did miss the Scorchers. So this is going to be a little bit wonky. It's going to be difficult for them to deal with this. Orphelius' commander has not been morphed either, but the Scorchers can't actually go up here. Vehicles can't go up in this platform. And down goes one of the Scorchers, and a Roach coming in here to try to deal with them. Doesn't manage to actually do any damage, but not a bad strategy. It's just put them in place beforehand. Still, Orphelius now has to deal with the Sponge's expansion. The Sponge finally expanding. But even then, the Sponge doesn't have a whole lot of defenses on these expansions, which is fine. But the Sponge is doing this several minutes late, which is not fine. Which means that Orphelius is still going to have a pretty easy time dealing with this. Though, Orphelius is focusing far more on getting rid of the Scorchers than, is, than they are focusing on getting rid of the Metal Extractors. I mean, they have cranes around here. They're building up more Metal Extractors. They're just... They're still expanding quite a lot. They're still ahead economically. And they still have this factory switch with bandits. So they are doing just fine. Now, at this point... I mean, the Sponge building more crashes than they need to. Probably could build more levelers, too. Actually, levelers would be a very good idea. They would survive both ravens. I mean, more ravens are being built, but the two ravens that have been up for the game thus far, they wouldn't kill... They You'd need both of them to kill one leveler. So that would actually be an advantage by cost. However, it doesn't really matter, and also would deal with the bandits, no problem. It doesn't matter, though, because Orphelius is now attacking, and the sponge doesn't really have much time to build any levelers, nor are they focusing on it. Now, we do see, once again... Orphelius thinks that the Sponge has expanded over to the northeast, and they haven't. The Sponge has barely expanded at all. They are even, but still at this point, Orphelius has far more map control. They can easily take this area over here, probably take the northeast corner as well, and they are taking the southwest corner even more than they were already. The Sponge, still pretty solidly ahead, but economically, they're starting to get even. So it's going to come down a lot to the next battle. But it looks like Orphelius is in a much, Orphelius is in a much better position. Going to be able to take out one Scorcher pretty much for free, oh, just about, not quite. Just about takes it out. But still, getting more bandits. That was a great position, though. I mean, the bandits were in a nice line right on the edge of the Scorcher line. Making it much harder for the Scorchers to deal the damage they need to. It's basic Napoleonic tactics, but it works in this game. Now, the Sponge's commander... Has it been more... Yes. The Sponge has more of their commander to Beam Laser. That's it. Just Beam Laser. And the Sponge is now going pure Scorcher. No masons whatsoever. Pure Scorcher, which, like I said, I don't really agree with. And Outlaws being built up, that will help deal with that. Thugs being built up will also deal with that very well. I mean, the thing is, shields actually, with the actual shield itself, not the factory as a whole, but the shield mechanic, that counters Scorchers pretty much effectively. Because Scorchers can't dive in very well because the shields tend to overlap in ways that, you, if you go under one shield, you're still not necessarily under all the shields. And speaking of which, Thugs are being built up. It's exactly the right thing to do. Orphelius is getting the right units up. Still going to the northeast because they suspect something's there and there isn't. But hey, at least they know. That's good to do. I mean, they know there's nothing to the northeast. They can take the northeast if they liked. And taking the center now. The bandits taking out a couple scorches, but still going down. That not wasn't the best position. Not as good as it could have been. Not as good as it was last time. It's a bit closer to Orphelius's lines, though. So the reclaim is definitely more in Orphelius's territory. But like I said, Orphelius is still kind of ahead, building up, building up more metal extractors, getting, just in case, getting a Stardust on here, just in case the Sponge decides to send some units over to the southwest. And now the crash is going to the northeast. These Ravens, they'd better be careful. As in, they get, they better get out of the way or attack directly. That works too. I mean, that actually does deal a fair amount of damage, but unfortunately two Ravens have gone down as a result of that. Not the most effective strategy. I mean, it did get rid of a Crasher, which is good. But that's still a lot of Ravens that were killed. That's probably going to give the Sponge the confidence they need to actually go for an attack. And at this point, they are going right south of the Sponge Ball that Orphelius had built up. Straight up the factory, though, and a Roach being built up to deal with this. The Roach needs to stop now. No, ow! Well, actually, that wasn't too bad. But still, that Roach needed to have stopped a bit earlier just to get a slightly better position on those Scorchers. And one of the Scorchers, another Scorcher goes down, but still, this is not a good position for the Orphelius. There's there's not much in here to defend against the Scorchers. There's one Defender, there's a Raven, there's these Bandits that can flank, which aren't. But yeah, this Air Factory is basically dead. Yeah, there's not much that can be done here. The Air Factory is gone. Looks like Orphelius is going for a revenge kill. Taking their Thugs and Outlaws going and trying to destroy everything they can. 
still... Well... Okay, the Scorch is getting killed by the wind generators blowing up more than anything else. But that air factory is gone, and now the Sponge has the confidence they need. I mean, they also, they know they don't need crashes anymore, or they don't know they don't need crashes anymore. They actually do need them a little bit, but they basically don't. Only one Raven even has ammo anymore, this one right here. The other one does not have any ammo. But at the same time, the Sponge moving in with Thugs and Outlaws, perfect counter to all these Scorchers. That, that's going to deal enough damage. I think this is going to be game, or very close to. Because at this point, the Sponge has basically not expanded at all. They had these two metal extractors, one over here, one over here. That's all they've had. This is... Yeah, they're trying to dive, which is working okay, but not great. Like I said, thugs... They, it's hard to dive thugs. That was a small number of thugs, so a bit easier than normal, but still, that... It's hard to dive them. And with enough defenders in the center of the map, these Scorchers can't really do much. They are getting rid of Ophelius' commander, though, and down it goes, evening out the economy a bit, but not the military. The Sponge losing basically all the military force they had, while Ophelius, on the other hand... I mean, they don't have an air factory once again. Still have a crane, though. And they're actually going to rebuild the air factory. So at this point, Orphelius just getting more and more convicts and thugs. Probably outlaws. Not going for anything else to do. Sorry, convicts and outlaws. That's all they're getting. In convicts and outlaws, compared to Scorchers, Scorchers are still kind of behind. But the center defense is going down means the Sponge does have a way of getting in. I mean, the Sponge did actually, I think, kind of win that fight. So Orphelius like, overextended a little bit. Surprisingly, has not taken the Northeast. I'm really quite surprised that, despite the fact that the Northeast has been open this entire time, Orphelius has not taken it. Like, Orphelius knows that's been open, but they haven't taken it. And I think that's the one thing that's kept the Sponge in the game up to this point, is that Orphelius has not really taken all the economy they can get. They've taken a lot of it, just not all of it. And at this point, more comments coming in here for Reclaim. Which makes sense, though, really, a couple of them should go over here. I mean, six more, or six to eight more metal, that's not a bad thing to get. But definitely the reclaim makes sense at the moment. Reclaiming the street lamps, reclaiming the wreckages, reclaiming everything. Yes, they are in fact all street lamps. That's mostly an energy reclaim though, not a metal reclaim. Yeah, pointing out uncontested. Uncontested metal. No one's gone from the northeast at all. The southwest, yes, and actually the sponge is going to lose a lot of the scorches if they don't retreat. Stardust and the defenders. Bit of a warning there, but nope, not heeding that warning at all. The Sponge, okay, sorry, the Sponge does heal that warning eventually. Once they see the Stardust, they go. They get out of there. And Orphelius knows exactly where the Sponge is. So with that, Orphelius is going to try to go for a flank. Admittedly, these convicts, they're kind of nice bait, but the Thugs and Outlaws are in the way. And those Scorchers wisely avoid them. But even then, the Sponge... Probably not sure what to do right now. Orphelius is still kind of ahead. The Sponge does have a fair amount of reclaim they're working from right now. Their commander is also alive. If that can be destroyed, then that's going to be probably the nail in the coffin. And Orphelius does have more Ravens coming up. They don't know where the Commander is yet, but still. You know, three Ravens coming to the Commander, that would do the trick. That would kill it. I mean, it would jump away, but then you're going to wait. You wait a bit, wait until it jumps, and then go. It's going to try to mix you up the jump. Just let it happen. Deal with it afterwards. But it looks like, no, the Ravens are trying to get rid of the Scorchers instead. Which is a little bit surprising. But... Still kind of work? No, it doesn't work at all. What am I saying? Two Ravens died for that. When I could have killed out the Sponge's commander, which was completely undefended. And they're... Okay, now we're getting levelers. Now we're getting... Wait, did someone take Dominatrix? I'm not sure... Okay, they must talk in the abstract. I thought they were talking about Dominatrixes on, on the battlefield. There are no Dominatrixes on the battlefield. There are four levelers, though. That is a very good idea. Levelers pretty much counter the shield mechanic. Like, as much as Scorchers get countered by it, Levelers counter it. Because Levelers have quite a lot of splash damage, and that just... Well, it doesn't quite penetrate through the shields. Actually, yes, it does. What am I saying? It does penetrate through the shields. The splash damage really does a number, but... The, not for the Scorchers. The Scorchers don't really have much chance. And nice Roach placement in the center of the map, getting rid of a lot of the Scorchers. The remaining Scorchers to be gotten rid of by the Thugs and Outlaws. But like I said, the Sponge has Levelers. Levelers can't easily be bombed out. They have, they have 1,100 metal each. Sorry, 1,100 health each. They cost 300, so 240 metal, I think. Yeah, 240. Once again, Raven's coming in. Takes two to kill one of them, but the Crashers are actually managing to pay for themselves. The Sponge's early Crasher investment actually paying off. Which is a little bit frightening, I'm sure, for Ophelius, or at least annoying for Ophelius. Crashers also take two Raven bombs to kill. 
And now, finally, Orfila is going over to the northeast side of the map to get an additional economic advantage. Continuing to build more Ravens as well. I mean, really, just go for the commander. Take the economic advantage from that. I don't know if Orphelius knows where the commander is. Well, it's off radar. It was on radar for a while, but it isn't anymore. Now Orphelius moving forward. This is not going to work out especially well. The thugs can't do too much. They can do a bit, but not a whole lot. As you can see, the thug taking health damage despite the shields being up. That's what I mean. Splash penetrates shields. And continuing to get more and more economic advantage. Orphelius actually, at this point, should be taking it. And yes, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in the chat there. Okay, so good to know Orphelius did not know where the commander was. Still, that's something to check for. Like, sort of a general thing to check for. Where's my opponent's commander? At this stage in the game, it's not the biggest deal. I mean, plus 20, plus 30 metal. You don't really care about the commander. It's just because the commander... There was a period where it was more even. At that point, losing the commander was a bigger deal. Like it's, if the metal is below about plus 15, or the metal counts are about even, which, okay, obviously the player can't know, but if they are, a, if they can kind of tell where the metal extractors are and figure out from there, the metal counts are probably, or metal income is probably even, killing the commander, that makes quite a big difference. But at this point, Orphelius, they don't need their commander. They have their felon, which is a little bit risky with the levelers, that's, that might actually lose it. Really, the Felon is going to burn a lot of the shields to kill the Levelers. It's not Ravagers. Ravagers would be an even bigger deal. But Levelers are still a lot of health. And yeah, as you can see, Felon using up a l see, well, about half of its shields, I think. Oh no, not even half. Like, a third of its shields to kill the Leveler. So it's not the biggest deal. Actually, bear in mind that the ball itself is also draining its shields to help out. But yeah, it looks like it can kill a little under two level or a little over two Levelers with its shields. A little bit risky, but that did kill... That that killed two levelers. That's a big deal. At this point, the more levelers killed, the more the sponge can move in. And if the sponge can, in fact, move in, that is going to be game. Especially since the sponge actually has enough... They have enough ravens they could be sending them around the map. Just dropping on metal extractors around the map. Even in the main base. Like, send one to the main base to scout out what's over, what's over there, what defenses are there. But yeah, just send around killing metal extractors. I mean, it's one metal extractor per raven. Like metal extractors have half the health of the Raven bomb damage. So that would work out really well. I, I notice a lot of players don't actually do that. They don't tend to send their Ravens around the map, taking out one metal extractor per Raven. Like sending them, splitting across metal extractors. But it looks like the sponge figures there is not much to be done here. I mean, it's not entirely true. Ravagers would actually do a really good job. Ravagers would counter this. Because Ravagers would eat up all the Felon shields, and then everything else would tear them apart once the shields are gone. But looks at the sponge deciding instead to go for a jump bot factory, and there we go. Orphelius is actually sending in Ravens to the main base, which I don't totally agree with. I still think that should be sending only like one or two, but at this point doesn't matter. The sponge throws in the towel. That is game, but yeah, like I said, Ravagers, Ravagers stop the Felon from really being able to deal much damage. They have enough health, the Felon will drain all their shields on it, or most of their shields on it, and then after that, you just tear them apart with Levelers and Scorchers. Like the entire rest of the ball has no shields anymore, and that's game. Well, that game, but that destroys the army. That's a huge... That is a huge blow. That or air switch into Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds do a, do a number on these guys. Anyway, we're going to have another match in a couple minutes. It'll be the Sponge and Lowry on Wanderlust. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a moment.